Hello to you. Let's learn about how a monopoly can make even more profit. All right. So a lot of us are motivated by money, and so let's uh, think about what uh, what kinds of things a monopoly could do to, to earn even more. So remember, marginal revenue is going to be below price. They're the only firm. So how can we capture even more cash? So some monopolists with monopoly power are able to engage in what's called price discrimination. Okay. So regular old discrimination is just treating people differently based on some kind of characteristic. Price discrimination is selling the same product or service at different prices to different buyers. Okay, so you're differentiating the buyer and then you're charging them a different price. This is something really uh, only a monopolist is, is, tends to be good at, uh, but you're going to have a different set of prices depending on who somebody is. Okay, And this is all based on the willingness to pay uh, principle. So some people are willing to pay more for that product, uh, depending on where it is, right? So an example of this would be, you know, when a product first comes out, you've got those people that are willing to pay more because they want to be the first adapter of it, right? There's other folks like me who wait uh, for the product to, to come down in price a little bit, right? So uh, there's different willingnesses to pay, different income levels, all of that stuff we've learned before. Okay, so here's some examples of price discrimination. So this is a restaurant in uh, Santa Barbara, and it's a very beautiful restaurant. It's right, right on State Street, and the, you, if you sit on the street, you can watch all the people, right? It's a very cool dining experience. Or you can sit at this table, and it's back in the corner. I tried to get my wife to, to let us sit there and you know, test out my economic principles. She said no. She said it's worth it to sit near the table. So that's where we sat, okay? This is a pretty good example. Okay, this is orange juice in English on the top here, and this is orange juice in Spanish. Okay, so for this is again, down in Argentina, this is the, the tourist price, this is the local price. Right, so if you knew that, you would uh, you'd be able to save some money. Okay, this is Disneyland. You can see here Disneyland's doing a couple different forms of price discrimination. One, uh, there's a children's price and an adult's price. Right, they both take up the same seat on the amusement park ride, but uh, one's going to pay a lower price. And the other one is a military discount, right? So there's two different um, military uh, price uh, or non-military price. This is uh, Disneyland again. And so they've got a set of prices for out-of-town folks who have a, an inelastic demand, right? They've come all the way there. They're going to pay you know, whatever their, their, their demand is. And then you've got the Southern California person, right? So show them uh, your driver's license you can get a, a, a lower price, right? This is often true uh, in a lot of touristy places, right? With, um, you know, Sonoran Desert Museum knocks off a couple dollars if you live here in Tucson. Uh, many of the places in Las Vegas have a lower price for locals uh, because they face a, a more elastic demand, so they'll lower the price for those folks. Both getting the same experience, just at a different price, okay? Uh, I thought this was funny. Okay, so other examples. You know, kid, kids discount, senior discount. Um, car insurance, it is legal to price discriminate for young men um, because statistically they, they cause more accidents. Uh, if you're a young man, you, you're aware of this. If you're a young woman, maybe you've heard of this before, but uh, young men pay a higher price for car insurance. It is illegal to do that uh, with health insurance or to charge the, the sick more than the, the and not sick, so just an interesting uh, policy difference there. Okay, military discount, you, you know, all of those airline tickets, airline tickets, um, fascinating market. You know, get on an airplane, everybody pays a different price depending on when they booked the ticket. Okay, university of tuition, you have in state, out of state tuition, medical services, there's a price for uh, people with insurance, a price for people without insurance. And then finally, in sports, there's uh, season tickets versus single game tickets. These are often more expensive, but you have to buy a higher quantity to get that cheaper price. Okay, so they're price discriminating uh, there. So what does this look like on a graph? So we've got this skin's demand curve, the marginal revenues below it. This is a constant marginal cost, so it means that it's uh, at this at this quantity level we haven't reached the point where marginal costs are rising. Right, so you could think about a maybe a band um, releases a song, right? That digital copy of that song is going to be the same, right? very cheap there. So what they do is they profit maximize. You're going to go to our marginal cost equals marginal revenue. This is quantity. Follow this up to where the uh, monopolist price is. However, uh, instead of producing uh, this single price, we're going to charge th this quantity this high price. 
this quantity, this price, this quantity, this price, all the way down. And I'm actually going to continue to sell all the way down to where marginal cost equals demand. So I, I will sell these additional units because the marginal benefit, the additional benefit, the price is above the marginal cost. So even though the marginal revenue is below, I'm going to throw that out the window and I'm just going to price all the way down the demand curve. Okay. So one of the good things about um, margin or uh, price discrimination is there's no dead weight loss. And instead of this monopoly quantity, we're going to get a higher quantity. Okay. Of course, one of the bad things is these folks are going to pay a higher price and these folks are going to pay that lower price, which is good for them. Um, but there is no consumer surplus because you're going to charge, uh, you're going to pay exactly what you're willing to pay, right? And so you're going to get the product, but you're going to you're going to pay for it. So that's price discrimination. So there's no deadweight loss, and this is what's called a perfectly price discriminating monopolist. Okay. Now it's funny, in in the real world, this is a slide from a textbook company that says uh, no one knows everyone's buyer's willingness to pay. So in the late '90s, that was totally true. Uh, buyers wouldn't signal uh, what their willingness to pay was for the sellers, but uh, and so they'd have to segment out. Um, today, things have definitely changed, right? And today, Amazon knows uh, a lot of data about you. They know a lot of data about other customers. Fry's tries to figure it out based on the frequent buyer card, right? They can definitely figure it out. Uh, this is uh, Walmart too. Walmart uh, online can figure out who you are. They can also run your credit card records and figure out who this consumer is and what their willingness to pay for certain quantities are based on different prices. Okay, so it is entirely possible now, and we're entering kind of a new world where your data can be used uh, to get you to pay a different price. Which, if I'm a company, that's awesome. If I'm a consumer, this may eat away at my uh, consumer surplus. Okay, so this is a perfect price discrimination, and hopefully you already watched uh, this clip where uh, the soup guy is uh, the soup seller here. He is selling different different prices for different people. Some people get bread, some people don't. Higher price. He's not selling to certain people. He's definitely price discriminating.